coinciding with the construction of a new facility that's going to be open in the fall, I think that uh, the, the whole purpose in building this new facility uh, was to advance our cause, so to speak, in the way we handle animals. Uh, and part of that new initiative is really promoting adoption and having that foster care coordinator as well to uh, help us manage our population in a better way than we do now. some first-hand or second-hand experience with those who are caretakers of colonies. Uh, I, you know, I mentioned that my, uh, uh, my wife's stepfather, who, who by the way is, is a retired physician, licensed in two states, uh, is a caretaker and uh, he, he, feeds, uh, he feeds a colony every morning. So, um, I, I, you know, one day we were talking about the issue and I was looking at the window and and there were squirrels all over the trees. And, you know, we kind of said, well, squirrels are in the wild and they seem to interact well with the public and they're not carrying disease. Or, I mean, they're herbivores and are carnivores, but we, we don't hear of real problems taking place with the squirrel population. And I thought, I, you know, I'm not sure how much different that is with a cat colony in that sense. So um, we talked to Dr. Branch about the idea of perhaps figuring out a way to do a pilot program where we can actually uh, register the caretakers and uh, measure uh, the efficiency of TNR uh, and also monitor any health concerns that might take place. And uh, if, if these pilots work out well, then that's a program we can expand. And I think that that's a nice measured way of looking at it. Uh, and uh, if it's successful, great. Uh, we're uh, delighted to have some regular dialogue with Jennifer Browse at uh, uh, Barks. And uh, we certainly hope to uh, utilize Barks for uh, an advisory capacity in how to implement some of these programs. So, uh, uh, you know, the devil's in the details, so to speak, uh, and, uh, you know, we hope to have a, uh, a game plan in place uh, starting with our fiscal year in July 1. Uh, the reason I said July 1 is because that's also coinciding with our plan to fund the hiring of a volunteer coordinator as well as a foster care coordinator. So both of those uh, uh, fiscal events will occur with the passage of the budget. Uh, and, and then uh, implementation effective July 1. So I think that uh, who we hire in those positions could also give us assistance in implementing uh, the pilot program as well. Do you have a goal as to how many volunteers you would like to see at the shelter? No, I, I can't answer any of those questions at this stage. First of all, you, you have to hire the person and get a sense of uh, during that interview process of, of what their proposals might be, and we're certainly receptive to that. But again, I, I, I'm telling you, we're not going to reinvent the wheel, so to the extent that we can uh, rely on, on a group like Barks that does have a successful volunteer program, we're certainly interested in learning from them as to uh, how we can improve our product. We could reach a partnership agreement down the road. Uh, we're, we're just not there today. Uh, but I, you know, I, I, I know where we were four years ago when I first took office, and I know where we are today and where we're going. And uh, you know, I think the, the progress has been uh, tremendous. Uh, so uh, you know, I, I, I think the leadership at the top, so to speak, is is of the right mindset right now. So. Uh, you know, we just have to recognize uh, that that glass is half full, not half empty, and that we certainly want to fill that glass to the rim.